St. Francis Borgia has been big, beautiful, and strong for the past 181 years, not only as a parish, but as a structure. I'm going to be telling you all about the ins and outs of the church's structural history, so let's get started. In this picture drawn by Nicholas Point, the first church of St. Francis Borgia Parish was a simple log cabin built in 1838. Some of the families that helped to build the church were the Regals, Blackmans, Boers, and Webbers. This church was located in what is now St. Francis Borgia Cemetery. There is currently a chapel in the cemetery that is a similar size to what the church would have been in 1838. The original 15 families soon outgrew the small church. In 1846, the second church was built in Washington. It was 36 feet wide and 70 feet long. Not even a decade later, the church became too small for the parishioners. When the builders were placing pillars for the new addition, they had discovered that the church floor was very rotten. The whole parish came together, removed the flooring and the rotten wood, dug out the cellar, made air holes, and laid the new joists and flooring. Just over a decade later, they ran out of space again. In 1853, Father Martin Seisel became pastor at St. Francis Borgia Church. As you can see in the picture, he is holding an image of the outline of the third and current church of St. Francis Borgia Parish. Work on the church began on April 4, 1867. In this picture, you can see bricklayers working on the east wall of the current church. In the background, you can see where the second church ends and its steeple. There is a fun story that goes along with the building of the steeple, and it involves Fritz Bleckman. Fritz warned the architect that the foundation that was laid would not hold the steeple, and that it wouldn't be halfway finished before it fell over. Fritz ended up being right. The architect that had originally designed our church resigned. He had another project about six months ahead in Alton, Illinois. The steeple for the church in Illinois was half finished and it collapsed. If Fritz did not warn the building committee, they would have had to start from scratch. When building the current church, the Washington Fire Department wanted to put in a cistern as a source of water during fires. They wanted to put these cisterns near big buildings that have large roofs that would give off lots of water in rainstorms. These included churches and big business buildings. It was approved and they put three in town, one by St. Peter's Church, one by Borgia, and one on Front Street. After three quick years, the church was finally finished. In this picture, you can see the second church in the background, which is where Jesuit Hall sits today. You can also see in this picture the design built into the shingles of the steeple. Pieces of the church had come from all over the United States, including our stained glass windows, which were from Buffalo, New York. Blessing the new church was set for Easter Monday, April 6, 1869. But just because the church was blessed doesn't mean the building stopped. Now we can head up the steeple and go talk about the bells. There are three bells. The first is in honor of St. Francis Borgia, and it weighs 3,160 pounds. This is the bell that currently rings at the top of the hour. This is the inside of the large bell. They no longer use this clapper due to the possible wear and tear on the steeple and the bell. These hammer-like pieces are attached to the larger bell. You can see where these pieces have hit the bell multiple times and has started to rust. In the following video, you will be able to see where the hammer currently hits the bell. The second bell is in honor of the Blessed Virgin, weighing 1,590 pounds. 
The third and smallest bell is also in honor of the Blessed Virgin. It weighs 868 pounds. If you look at the wheel on the side of the bell, you can tell that the bell used to swing back and forth. But like I said earlier with the large bell, they have changed to a clapper because of the wear and tear on the steeple and bell. Nobody truly knows how they got the bells up the steeple considering they were installed after the church was built. I have heard on multiple accounts that they used a pulley system and mules to install the bells. As we move up the steeple, we arrive at the clock. In this picture, you can see how intricate the clockwork is and how the clock hands turn. In this picture, you can see a pole sticking straight up. Attached to this pole are four additional poles attached to the four clock faces on the north, south, east, and west. On each clock face, there is a small door. When I was up there, we were able to take pictures out each clock face. This is a view out of the south clock face. And this is the view out of the north clock face. As you go further up into the steeple, you can see, just like in these pictures, there is only wood. There were no metal beams used in the making of this church. This is a picture of the very highest point you can go in the steeple. The light shining in is from the very top grate, as shown in the following picture. As we climb back down, we take a pit stop to see the crawl space above the actual church. There are hundreds of thick wooden beams holding up this church. This is a picture of the comparison between the wooden beam and a man's hand. The wooden beams were not the only things that had to be strong. The brick walls were also very thick, at four to five bricks wide in some spots. I had mentioned when renovating the second church that they had found out that the church floor was very rotten. There had been no air to pass under the floor. When they renovated, they made sure to make this crawl space and dug out a cellar. When building the third and current church, they made sure to not make this mistake again. This is the crawl space underneath our church. The church uses this area to their advantage. They installed an AC and heating unit and occasionally use it for other storage. Although it is hard to see in this video, the white rock you see straight ahead is the foundation of the church. In this video, you can see the wooden beams and the brick pillars that hold up the foundation of this church. This parish's structural history is not only a good way to connect with your ancestors, but also to see how architecture and engineering has changed.